All right, we're going to work with the number a in the set z. So a is some integer, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, something like that. And what we're going to do is we're going to show that 33 divides a. This means that 33 goes into a in an integer number of times. IFF, if and only if, 11 divides a and 3 divides a. So this is an if and only if type proof. So we have two cases that we need to work through. We need to show that when 33 divides a, this implies 11 divides a and 3 divides a. And then we also have to go the other way. We have to show that when 11 divides a and 3 divides a, this implies that 33 divides a. So that's kind of how we're going to set the problem up. We're going to do this one case at a time. So case one, let's show that when 33 divides a, this implies both 11 divides a and 3 divides a. Okay, so assume 33 divides a. What does this mean? Well, that means that I can write a as 33 times some number k for some k. Okay, because if a is written in this form, 33k, it's clear that 33 is a factor, and 33 must go into a an integer number of times, and specifically go in k times. So the assumption 33 divides a means that I can write a as 33 times k for some k. If I do a little algebra here, I can rewrite 33k as 11 times 3 times k. Well, looking at this now, it's very clear that this means that 11 divides a, because 11 is a factor of the quantity 11 times 3k. So I can quickly deduce that 11 has to divide a. I could also go back to my original expression of a equals 33k and write it as 3 times 11k. Right? And again, looking at this, it's obvious that 3 divides a. So the first part's done. 33 divides a implies that 11 divides a and 3 divides a. So that implied this and this, those two things. So the first part of the proof is done. We've gone one direction with the if and only if. For the second case, we want to show that 11 dividing a and 3 dividing a implies that 33 divides a. So again, we're going to assume 11 divides a and 3 divides a. So what does this mean? That means that I can write a as 3k for some k. It also means that I can write a equal to 11l for some l. That's what both of these statements mean. The first one, a equals 3k, comes from the 3 divides a. And the second statement, a equals 11l, comes from 11 divides l. That's what it means to be divisible by 3 and divisible by l by 11, respectively. Okay, so let's work on this a little bit. If I rewrite that second equation and solve for l, this says that l is equal to 8a over 11. And l, obviously, is an integer. If I use the first assumption, this means that I can write l as 3k divided by 11. So all I've done is substitute in the other equation, a equals 3k, into here. And I can now see that L can be written as 3k over 11. But again, L has to be some integer. So when I look at the expression 3k divided by 11, obviously 11 cannot go into 3. Okay. So since 11 can't go into 3, and there's only one other factor, k, that means 11 has to go into k. So k has to be divisible by 11. Okay. So k has to be divisible by 11. So if I replace that with what that means mathematically, that means k has to be written as 11 times some integer, and we'll just call it integer n for this case. So since 11 has to go into k, that means I can write k as 11n. And now I can go ahead and finish my substitution. I can write this as a equals 3k, back to that first equation, but k we know has to be written as some 11n, which is equal to 33n, and now I can see very clearly that a has a factor of 33, so a has to be divisible by 33. So that is the second part of the proof. These two things, 11 divides a and 3 divides a, implies that 33 divides a, and you can see in the proof we use both of those assumptions. We wrote a equals 3k and a equals 11l, and we ended up using both of those to get to the fact that 33 has to divide a. So that is the proof.